the history of mankind is a history of repeated injuries of man toward woman and having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny of her. These are not my words. I just borrowed them from the Declaration of Sentiments that was released by the organizers of the first ever Women's Rights Convention held at Seneca Falls in New York in 1848. Now, why would we begin the discussion of how Freire conceives empathy with an event that took place many, many years before Freire was born and even before Freire wrote Pedagogy of the Oppressed or Letters to Christina? There are a number of issues, three to be specific, that I think are relevant to this discussion. The dictionary definition of empathy seems to suggest that empathy is this ability to understand and share feelings of another person. I think Freire goes deeper than that because for Freire, empathy is a praxis a praxis informed by a deeper conscientization, not just of an oppressed group, but of the issues at play, the issues that oppress them. It's a form of conscientization. So, the first aspect of Rayleigh's empathy that comes out of, that, that seems to come out of this um, uh, particular event, um, um, uh, the Seneca Falls Convention, is the notion of empathy as a form of political solidarity. Remember, and I'm sure most of you have read most of his works, Freire's works, Freire fluctuates between Marxism and Christianity. So the first aspect, the first aspect of empathy is empathy as a form of political, as a form of Marxist class struggle in which a change agent or facilitators work with marginalized groups to produce this change. But before that can happen, there has to be a deeper conscientization, a deeper understanding of the issues at play. Because Freire himself warns against a fanaticism, especially when you don't understand particular issues. But here we are talking about empathy as, as a comprehensive form of conscientization that allows us to acquire good understanding of the issues at play. The Declaration of Sentiments was signed by 100 people out of the 300 participants. 68 were women, 68 were women, and 32 were men. At this time, patriarchy was like an official policy in this particular polity. So to have 32 men contribute to the signing of this document openly, was a concerted effort to acknowledge that society had a lot of things, had a lot of issues to deal with, had a lot of inequalities to deal with, especially when it came, it came to women's issues. So the, the first aspect of Freire's empathy is this Marxist conceptualization of empathy as a political praxis that allows us to identify with an oppressed group and work with them to transform the realities that oppress them. The second aspect of Freire's empathy that is also very uh, critical comes um, 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 or has been well articulated by the father of liberation theology, Father Gustavo Gutierrez, who, who introduces this notion of preferential option for the poor. So preferential option for the poor presupposes, in, in many, many cases, we might not be born in certain situations. But we have the spiritual obligation to transform the realities of other people because doing so is an expression of our absolute faith in God. Gratuitous love of God, our ability to transform the realities of other people takes us back to the Sermon on the Mount on, on, on Matthew 5, in Matthew 5, where Jesus talks about blessed are the poor. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those 
who hunger and thirst for righteousness. That we have this moral imperative to involve ourselves in liberation of oppressed groups, not necessarily because it's going to make us feel good, but because doing so expresses our love for God. The very notion of preferential option for the poor. And it comes out of this document as well. And some of you who have read it might wonder, what am I talking about? Actually, the document, Declaration of Sentiments, acknowledges God as the source of our equality. It's not the Constitution. It's not in any document written by man. But God is the one who endows us with inalienable rights that make us equal. And this is spelled clearly in, in uh, the Declaration of Sentiments. And I know that in a lot of academies nowadays, you know, the very mention of God, you know, uh, uh, brings up frowns. People, you know, um, don't seem to, uh, to, to really like this notion of, you know, God or Jesus being mentioned a lot in our work. But what, one of the things I like about Paulo Freire is that he was very open in expressing his faith in God. He was very open in acknowledging that whatever he did in terms of the, the social struggles to liberate people, to contribute to the liberation of, 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 of oppressed peoples, was an expression of his faith in Jesus Christ. In fact, he talks about Marxism as, as, as a facility that, has, that enabled him to continue to express his love for Jesus Christ. There was no contradiction at all. There is no dichotomous relationship. The third aspect of Freire's um, uh, empathy that I think also comes out of this uh, particular document, Declaration of Sentiments, is this notion of the acknowledgement of the other, to acknowledge the presence of the other. That the very notion of empathy places on us a political and moral duty to, to understand, to appreciate, and acknowledge the presence of other people. The wonderful writer Roger Silverstone, the former head of uh, Media and Communications Department at the LIC, writes in the beautiful book, Why Study the Media, that in everything we do, everything we do, whatever we write, whatever we say, the, the most important aspect is to understand other people is how we see other people, how we know them, to understand them, to make sense of them. I think empathy allows us to enter into the worlds of other people. It allows us to explore the, the, the worlds in which we are not familiar with. One of the criticisms I've seen um, uh, coming out a lot today um, uh, is that Oh, you know, you are not black, you cannot understand these things. Oh, you are not a woman, you cannot understand these things. Now, that's very dangerous to assume that maybe some, because somebody was not born in a certain way or because somebody was not born with a certain race, they cannot understand certain issues. I think we are born with this innate ability. The Creator endowed us with this innate ability to, to peer into other people's souls. So it doesn't matter, even if you're not a woman, you can still understand men. And even if you're not a black person, you can understand white people, you can understand Asian people. So experience is important, yes. You, 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 you can be born with a specific experience, but you can also learn an experience. And that's why the wonderful writer, uh, Edward Said, writes in the new introduction to, to, to Orientalism, published in the aftermath of September 11th, 2001, that we have the responsibility to study other people, not for the sake of exerting or validating our ignorance or superiority, but rather to enrich our understanding of other people and the issues at play. And that's what empathy does. It allows us to enter into worlds we are not familiar with. It's a facility to conscientize us, to build our knowledge base about issues that may be far-fetched, that may be off-site. Why should we care about empathy today? Well, the Italian writer, Antonio Gramsci, 
writes in the prison notebooks that history has deposited in us an infinity of traces without an inventory. What empathy does, and I think that's how Freire articulates it, it allows us to work with other people to contribute to the, to the writing of a new inventory, to contribute to the construction and deconstruction of history, to the making and unmaking of history. After all, oppressed groups did not just rise up one day. They were always present when the sun was rising. Thank you very much.